So we got some giant news here uh, from Ken Klippenstein. Now, I need you to stop and think about this for a second. When the roles were reversed, when the political parties were reversed, this became the biggest story in the country, right? When we learned that uh, Twitter and Facebook, when they censored the Hunter Biden laptop information, I believe it was originally a New York Post story, and uh, Twitter did not allow it uh, to be spread on their website. I believe it was for a day or two. But like, even if you try to DM it, they wouldn't let you DM it. If you tried to post the link, they wouldn't let you post the link. It was, uh, it was censorship. It was. And their argument was, well, this is election interference, and we can't allow election interference. And this was, you know, private laptop stolen, and we're not going to have that information floating around. That's basically what they said, but they reversed within a day or two. Uh, but it was a huge story. It was a huge story, and it was used as evidence or proof that these big tech social media companies are in bed with the Democrats and they're against Republicans, right? Well, now we have the exact same situation unfolding, but on the other side. Listen to this. Trump camp worked with Elon Musk's ex to censor my reporting from Ken Klippenstein. Trump collusion scandal targets your right to know, he says. Uh, the Trump campaign coordinated with Elon Musk's ex to kill circulation of my publication of the J.D. Vance dossier, the New York Times reported today. Simply put, ex colluded with a political campaign to restrict the public's access to information about a vice presidential candidate just weeks before the election. Millions of Americans like myself rely on social media platforms like X to participate in the political process, whether by active discussion or simply consuming political content. X's decision to remove my article and permanently suspend my account demonstrates that uh, demonstrates the awesome power concentrated in these platforms and their billionaire owners. The Trump campaign claims that my publication of the Vance dossier constitutes election interference. The real election interference here is that a social media corporation can decree certain information unfit for the American electorate. Two of our most sacred rights as Americans are the freedoms of speech and assembly, online or otherwise. It is a national humiliation that these rights can be curtailed by anyone with enough digits in their bank account. When Musk purchased Twitter in 2022 for an eye-popping $44 billion, it was unclear how the business mogul would manage to make the investment profitable. Initially, he promised no censorship or suppression and restored several previously banned accounts, including that of former President Trump. But now that Musk has become an outspoken advocate of Trump's presidential campaign, it is clear that his investment was always about political influence. Now, he is wielding that influence in increasingly brazen ways. Here's how the New York Times put X's collusion with the Trump campaign. Quote, after a reporter's publication of hacked Trump campaign information last month, the campaign connected with X to prevent the circulation of links to the material on the platform, according to two people with knowledge of the events. X eventually blocked links to the material and suspended the reporter's account. The Trump campaign and Musk did exactly what they've repeatedly condemned Twitter's previous owners for doing with the Hunter Biden laptop story. Suppress, manipulate, ban. All for your own good, of course. This story is much bigger than me. Boo-hoo, I lost my account. That is not the point. Next month, millions, next month, millions of Americans will decide who will be the next president. The decision will be made not just without knowledge of the contents of the J.D. Vance dossier, but also without knowledge of any of the other allegedly hacked documents the news media is apparently too afraid to cover. The media's decision not to report on the dossier's contents and what it says about Vance is a result of government pressure and interference. The media blackout laid the groundwork for X to actively suppress my story when I decided to publish the dossier in full, empowering the Trump campaign to successfully push for having links to my article taken down not just from X, but also from Instagram, Facebook, and Google Docs. Even the major media, which are plenty critical of Trump, would not cover the clearly newsworthy document. Why? Because they are reluctant to break from the position taken by the intelligence community, the White House, the political campaigns, and the social media and internet companies. These virtual censors have profound influence over what the public can and cannot see. By the way, they flipped their standard. Back when it was Hillary Clinton... They did run all the stories that it was information that was allegedly leaked because of Russia, right? Russia had the documents, gave them allegedly to WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks ran it. But even if it wasn't Russia, the point still stands. When there was WikiLeaks information on Hillary Clinton, all the media outlets ran it. Now, by the way, they should. That is the correct standard. The question here is, 
is whatever the information is newsworthy. If it's newsworthy, run it. It doesn't matter where it came from or the ulterior motives of the people who gave it to you. Run it. By the same token, they say, oh, this came from Iran. Now, we don't know if that's true, that the J.D. Vance dossier was hacked by Iran and given to all the media outlets. But even if it was, it doesn't matter. It is newsworthy. You run that which is newsworthy. That's how this works. That's what journalism is. That's what the First Amendment allows for. But now, when it was Hillary Clinton, everybody report, no problem. Now it's on Donald Trump and everybody's not reporting at all. Well, what a ridiculous double standard that is. It's an absurd double standard. And then now, as Ken's pointing out, when it was the Hunter Biden laptop story, uh, Elon Musk and conservatives were all pissed off because, you know, X, or Twitter at the time suppressed it, Facebook suppressed it, all these outlets suppressed it. They said, I, we're the free speech champions and we will come in and allow real journalism on the platform. We won't censor arbitrarily. We are not authoritarians like the other guys. Then they come in and do the exact same thing and they do it to Ken Klippenstein for reporting on J.D. Vance. So why did they do it? It's very simple. Elon Musk is basically a campaign surrogate for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance now. He likes Donald Trump. He likes J.D. Vance. He's got a personal relationship with them. He's got this now political and business relationship with them. He wants them to win. So he says, this makes my people look bad. Let's ban it. Let's ban it. So now here's the part that I cannot fucking get over. Where's the outcry? Where's the outcry? You know, where's the you know, Matt Taibbi writing 17 fucking Substack pieces on this, talking about the authoritarian censorship of the right? It's not there. The outrage isn't there. I don't see the outrage. I don't see the same talk. I don't see the same coverage. I don't see the free speech warriors, free speech warrioring. They're not doing it. Why? Because it looks like at the end of the day, they're all just partisan hacks and they all just cheerlead for Republicans. And so here you have information that makes Republicans look bad, and all of a sudden, they're, they're fine with censorship, they're fine with authoritarianism, they're fine with hiding the stuff that makes their guys look bad. These guys never had any principles at all, not even fucking close. And it's the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. And by the way, there was more of an argument. There was more of an argument to at least suppress some of the stuff in the Hunter Biden laptop because it was a genuine violation of privacy. Like, oh, I don't know, his fucking dick pics, right? There's more of an argument, hey, the public shouldn't really be able to see. This isn't even newsworthy and you're just fucking doxing a guy's dick and balls, right? There was more of an argument for that. But no, Elon and the conservative idiots were like, release all the Hunter Biden shit, no questions asked. How dare you fucking be against that, you authoritarian freak. But when it is clearly newsworthy stuff on J.D. Vance, the dossier on when Republicans vetted him, what they learned, that he's not going to allow. These people are total hacks and total frauds, and you should never take any of them seriously. So, in other words, to sum this all up, ready? Elon suspends Ken Klippenstein for linking to the J.D. Vance dossier, saying it counts as doxing. It comes out that Trump personally asked Elon to ban Ken. Elon, embarrassed because the New York Times reported on this, then reinstated Ken, and Ken's same link to the dossier is still up. In other words, it was never about doxing. It was never about, that was their lie that it was about doxing. That was their lie. And by the way, it was a while ago, it was now weeks ago that Ken said, fine, I'll take out anything that can be construed as doxing and uh, then say, here, here it is. And they still at the time did not put it up, put him back up. The only reason they allowed him back on is because the New York Times reported on this. And by the way, you might actually be looking at a crime that was committed here. It might actually be a crime that's probably the main reason why Elon Musk finally reversed course and allowed him back on. Absolutely insane, man. Absolutely insane. And again, is this the number one story in the country? Do I see all the free speech warriors talking about it? Nope. Nope. You'll hear about it here and maybe a couple other places, but you won't hear about it everywhere. It won't be the number one story in the country because conservatives control the narrative. And it doesn't matter that they were just caught in the mo most rank hypocrisy you've ever seen in your life. Water off a duck's ass is what it will be. And everybody will just move on. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.